a huge, uh, a huge day for a company that's only two years old. That's right. So let's talk about it so people understand just the background. How did this happen? Right. Well, first of all, thanks for, uh, for having me, me here today. It's, it's exciting to, uh, to be here. I think that the, the founders of our business are used to using technology in, in disrupting industries. And I think that's exactly what they've been doing with, with Lock and Coffee. So the background is, is technology. I think the founders are sort of coffee drinkers themselves. And right. they looked at the, the transaction structure of coffee. And they thought, we can do better than this. And I think that's when they came up with, with Luck and Coffee. And let's talk about sort of the economic uh, story here, because you are growing mm. uh, incredibly fast. 2,000 stores in China already. That's we right. should say Starbucks has 3,500 stores. That's right. However, we should also note you're losing money doing it. Mm. Mm. So the question is, um, as we would ask Uber, though, you, your, your company may have a different path. What's the path to profitability here? Yeah, let me, let me sort of try and take this, this question and dissect it a little bit. So I think, I think when you think about Luckin Coffee, what are we? We are, I guess, a new retail model that's trying to disrupt the, trend, the traditional model. And I guess the way we do that is, first of all, when you go to our stores, you have to use the app, right? So right. we have effectively connection with our customers, and we can also drive retention rate through our app. And just to be clear, if you walk into the store, you have to buy on the app. You have to there buy on the no app. There is no option to walk up to a retailer. You, you, you technically can pay with cash, but basically you have to download the app. It still goes through the app, the transaction. Okay. So everything goes through the app. Everything is cashless, which means that we have all the connection with the customers and data. That's point one. I think point two is we're using technology. Technology is for us very important, which makes our operations efficient lower wastage and also very good quality control. And I guess the last point is where we're different is when you think about our store footprint, we're using very small stores, right? right. Rental, decoration, we save a lot of money. Uh, we're very close to our customers. And if you look at those three together, that's kind of what we call the new retail model. And that has fundamentally changed the cost structure in China. So when you think about sort of where we are today, we have fundamentally changed the cost structure, which then allows us to bring high quality products for actually a much more affordable price and still be profitable. I think when you think what we've achieved, 2,000 stores, we have done what most people do in, in 15 or 20 years. And of course, you have to make an investment in, in, in your systems right. and your staff and in your branding. Uh, but I think the unit economics today are actually pretty, pretty clear. So a cup of coffee costs half the price as a Starbucks coffee. Yeah, so our, tar our target price is to sell it around sort of 16, 17 renminbi, which we think is the right price to really drive sort of that mass market consumption. And do you think you're going after a different audience than Starbucks? Well, when we think about sort of the coffee market in China, right? So if you think about China, one and a half cups of freshly brewed coffee versus maybe 300 to 400 in the U.S. It's a heavily underpenetrated market. What we're trying to do is bring down the per cup cost to provide something that is affordable, but also something that is convenient and something that is, that is, that is high quality. And I think with that and with that price point, we think we're going to drive mass market consumption. And we see that to right. some extent already. And I think where we're after is really driving that mass market consumption and also focusing more on the functional aspects. Right. But right now, there is heavy discounting going on, right? So the, the real question on a unit economic basis mm. is, A, how fast you're going to grow, mm. and B, when does that hit profitability without the discounts? Right, I think... Or, do you, or, do, or, do, or can you discount and still get your profitability? I, I, think, I think just in terms of the discounting, how, how we look at it is, we, we have ourselves, we have the listing price. If you go to right. the app, you see our listing price. We don't ultimately want to sell for the listing price. We're going to give you a buy, buy two, get one free coupon, which effectively gets you down to around sort of 16 to 17 RMB, okay. which we think is the right price to sell. So from the listing price, yes, we're giving discounts. But if you look at our per cup cost, our per cup cost today is, is close to 11 RMB, which means that even if we sell at 16, we're still going to be profitable. And that's how we see that in terms of the unit economics, we're approaching right. our break-even point. If you have 2,000 stores today, if we were sitting here in a year from now, two years from now, how many stores do you want to have? Look, I think for us, we, we're thinking about this from a, from a demand perspective. And I think what we're looking at is we try to acquire customers and figure out where the demand is and then supplement that with the right. store footprint. I think our targets by the end of this year, we've communicated, which is around 4,500 stores. Um, and I think you'll see that growing uh, going forward. Um, can you speak to just doing business in China right now? You, um given the sort of larger conversation we've been having about China trade and, and everything else that's going on? Yeah, look, I, I think we don't see an awful lot yet in, in sort of China, at least related to our business, which is right. impacted by sort of the trade war. Um, I think Do you, you think the trade war could slow Starbucks down and therefore advantage you? Uh, look, I think, I think that's, again, something we don't see today. Um, if there's something happening around those, those trends, that could possibly impact Starbucks more than us, but that's not something we're particularly focused on.